So, so uh, we already have uh, difficulties for the mining industry to expand production now, right? It, it's it's hitting difficulties now. The idea that the, the future is going to be metals based in renewables, and a lot of those metals are quite exotic, like uh, that that are not mined in very large quantities at the moment. We just don't have the infrastructure to supply a lot of those metals, so they're just not going to arrive in time. And even if, uh, and so anything to make um, solar panels, wind turbines, electric vehicles, and then a lot of the electronics in general that we have that we need for the fourth industrial revolution, all are going to have multiple supply shortages and supply bottlenecks right across the value chain, right across the planet. And so, so the, this idea where things just magically happen so smoothly, you know, you, you could click on Amazon and say, I'll buy that book, and, and the book just appears two days later. That, and, and it all happens in the background just magically and smoothly. Uh, it won't be smooth anymore. Right? And so it's, it's, and it's material shortage. Uh, and uh, the, what I haven't sort of spoken to about at the moment is what will happen with industrial agriculture, what I believe in. And so that's actually the next macro scale problem behind the mineral shortage. Uh, and that's probably you know uh, ten years away from its pain threshold, but the mineral shortage that's that's four or five years away from its pain threshold. So you've got copper, uh, to a, a vast amount of copper is needed for electronics, but also every electrical device requires copper, and for every wind turbine, there's a copper cable as thick as your leg connecting that copper wind turbine to the grid. So if it's out to sea, like offshore, it's a longer cable. Right. So we have copper, we have nickel. We have lithium, cobalt, graphite, silver. Uh, um, I think they're, they're the ones I sort of picked so far. But they're the ones, this is just to actually make the existing um, grid. But the existing system is also struggling to deliver because everything it depends upon is related to energy. And fossil fuels became unreliable around 2018. I do believe that will later prove to be peak oil. We won't really know 2024 or 2025 or something like that. But... Uh, it's it's around now. So oil, gas, and coal. Like peak coal was around 2013. That's related to Chinese manufacture. Uh, gas uh, peaked around 2019, but that could be an artifact of the COVID-19 pandemics. So so um, if you turn energy is the master resource. If our current systems are energy are based in in um, fossil fuels, but that fossil fuels becomes uh, unreliable in the open market, then everything it attaches to will become unreliable. So the entire value chain to actually deliver raw materials to things like manufacture will become unreliable. And then there comes a problem of, well, we won't be able to source a lot of these minerals at all. So a lot of products that we take for granted are just simply going to go offline. We're seeing it now, for example, microchips in uh, cars in the United States. Now that's an above ground limitation, uh, but you know, what happens when we can't, say, su supply a particular rare earth element? And so, yeah, we, we will see mineral shortages of all kinds. And, and there's structural shortages there now. So as, as we actually want more electric vehicles on the road and we actually want more of the grid to be renewable, we will see more of these problems. And that's now. So 500 years ago, Everything you needed to do to survive, you controlled directly, like you grew your own food, or you knew personally the person who did. In your village was everything you ever needed. Uh, and if you did need metals, they, were, they came from a relatively local source. And so it was relatively easy and flexible just to respond to external emergencies. Since we've had this really, really cool energy source for such a long time, we've now developed a system where as a six continent supply chain of a just in time supply grid of such complexity we can't even describe it. Remove the oxygen from that system, that's energy. What happens to that supply system and what is our ability to make a more resilient version of that? This is where things you know this is where the difficulty becomes.